Do you ever think about how much cheap streaming content is just going to be lost to time? I mean, consider how many obscure straight to video movies like Max Magician and The Legend of the Rings there are. Nowadays, this would be straight to Tubi and we'd forget about it whenever streaming advances past Tubi. Yeah. Here I come to save the day. Ah! I stumbled across this film when randomly browsing online about these low-budget horse movies starring kid celebrities. There's The Derby Stallion starring Zac Efron and The Wild Stallion starring Miranda Cosgrove, both made by the same director. Through looking up the same studio that made The Derby Stallion, I came across Max Magician and The Legend of the Rings. Look at that box art. It feels like it slipped into our time from another dimension. It's like a reverse Mandela effect. I don't remember this existing, but it's always existed. How could I resist? Yeah, this is Billiam. 2001 gave us the fantasy film Lord of the Rings 1 and the fantasy film Harry Potter 1. But in 2002, Max Magician came along and said, hey, what if you fell asleep watching both of those movies at the same time? And when you woke up, people asked you to describe the plot. That's like what Max Magician is. At least that's vaguely how the science fiction and Chronicle quote on the front of the box describes it. A what? An assassin, you know, someone who gets paid to kill you. No way! Oh boy, that's not good news. Duh. Uh-oh. Max, look out! <laughs> This movie is filled with beautifully low budget scenes and crafted costumes, storytelling, and dubbing that is the perfect combination of genuine competency and catastrophic misfires. Not like you porcupines of the forest. My lord, my lord, go! Idiot, idiot! <sighs> I heard that. It's like they blew their whole budgets on the costumes and forgot to record sound. Like 90% of the movie is redubbed. I, I just wanna keep them, can I dad, please? Please? A mouse, Max? You wanna keep a mouse? So let's embark on this fantastical journey with a kid magician named Max and a mouse named Crimble as they try to defeat an evil guy, a king named Lord Dagda. <laughs> and of course some rings are there and I hear stones too. I don't know. Internet security is something at the forefront of my mind right now for no reason at all. Definitely not because my channel was just hacked, which makes it perfect timing to thank the Titans for today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. At only 183 per month plus three months extra, Atlas VPN offers super affordable online protection if you're looking for something on Google, you can search the web with Atlas VPN and you'll get real and organic search results without tracking your activity. Additionally, Atlas VPN blocks all suspicious links, ads, and trackers and notifies you when someone's trying to steal your data, not unlike what happened to my YouTube channel. For a limited time, Atlas VPN is only $1.83 per month. Plus you get three months extra with a 30 day money back guarantee. Take advantage of this deal as soon as possible by clicking the link in the description below. Thank you so much to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Max Magician and the Legend of the Rings was made by Scorpio Pictures. They brought us classics like the Derby Stallion, Sleepy Hollow High, and the adventures of young Van Helsing, the quest for the Lost Scepter. The movie opens up with two guys being chased in the woods. An evil masked uh, goblin morph kills them both but not before a magical scroll rolls through a portal and into some small American mountain town. This old man picks it up and we hear someone talking. We are in grave danger. I think it's the bird. You're our only hope. The voice claims that the elves are in danger and something about this old guy being their only hope. He's gotta do something about it. Like Obi-Wan Okeechobee. I'm a Florida guy. Now we meet Max, who has never not been a magician. The first time we see him, he is practicing a neat wand trick. And if I didn't know he liked magic, I'd say he liked milk. You know what they say, two cartons down the hatch, no come out the ass. How about we take this thing off? You're getting a little old for that. Mom, I wasn't gonna wear it to school. I should say not. Come on, let's Give keep cracking. Give me a break. I'll give you a break. There's some tension there, for sure. Max is your regular kid who finds himself being bullied at school for what he loves, magic and animal byproducts. He's got milk tricks, he's got egg tricks. Then crack it on our volunteer's head. Yes, sir. <laughs> You are so dead. You don't want to know what he does with cheese. I won't make a joke about the kid acting here because this is Max Magician and it's fucking awesome giving me life and joy and shit. I think he's gonna need a volunteer. Okay, never mind. These kids suck, but I do love it. There are bad actors with charisma and bad actors with no charisma. Unfortunately, they's got charismas. I was just about to say the magic words. 
Abracadabra. Maybe I shouldn't call them bad actors. They did basically have to redub every single scene. A lot of old Italian films would like film with no audio and just dub it later. So maybe we don't have to call it bad acting. Let's just call it Italian. Hey, when your audio turns out bad, what are you gonna do? We're gonna do. Max's bullies chase him, running Max into the old man from the beginning. I don't know how Max knows him, but that's Mr. Tim. Mr. Tim gives Max a book and claims it's real magic. Mr. Tim is supposed to do something about a conflict in a magical realm, but he's gotta hang with the wife tonight and he can't get to it right now. Well, I better get. Saturday's Mrs. Tim's shopping day and she'll tan my hide if I don't have her at the mall at 10. Mad respect, Mr. Tim. Do not give up your night with your wife to go protect this alternate magical realm. Max humors the local old guy by taking the book. Max just wanted a big bowl of bluebell ice cream. Instead, he's just shocked beyond belief because of how bad that crop on the gateway is to the magical bluebell forest. Hey. Those are the computer graphics of all time. He enters into the doorway without hesitation and he's accompanied by one of the many field mice he's friends with. Don't ask me about the field mice because I don't know. Hey little buddy, how you doing? Check out this new book Mr. Tim gave me. What I do know is one of them follows him into the fairy tale realm. Where are you? I'm right here. Where? Who the f is laughing in here? Hey, hey, watch it. Do you mind? And yes, I'm a boy. It's the mouse. The mouse is trying to speak through his maniacal laughter. Wait till I tell Mr. Tim you can talk. He's Crimble. I'm Crimble. Crimble is f***ed up, yo. He's so elated by the gift of life, he can't stop being so goofy. Like, bro, chill out. It's a serious story. We don't need your POV <laughs> running through the little grass laughing all whimsically and shit. F*** it. I love it. While venturing through this fantasy world, Max meets a lot of bizarre magical creatures who live inside a permanent renaissance festival inside the forest. The gates are opened by Tom Tit Tot, an off-putting like goblin morph, no, go 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 goblo morph, that's what I call them, sort of person who is so gross and so ugly, but he speaks in rhyme, so he's not unadorable. And what do they call you, my lad? You know I'd be most glad. At the banquet, Max meets the princess, Etain, and some fish guy. Well, Max doesn't meet him, but he's there having a great time. Just always cutting to him, having a great time at the banquet. All that makeup to make it a great time. When this bird keeps squawking at the banquet, it's like, come on, pick up the pace already. There's so many little awkward pauses as it is, and there's so little sound coming from this party. <laughs> hey, some party, huh? Max gives a speech and bombs it. Uh, hi. I'm Max. Mr. Tim just gave me this book. That's why I got here with Crimble. That's it. The bird is like, get off the stage. Gwydion, brother. That's her brother? That's the bird is her brother? Oh my God. There's so much story in this world waiting to be unwrapped, just sparking my curiosity. I need backstory, people. How did Etain's brother attain avianship? How would you become a bird if you had to? Visit the local wacky inventor? The bird speaking at the beginning of the movie, who's a different bird than the bird at the banquet, whose voice actor just stands way too close to the mic. A champion after all. Swoops in from time to time, like a little video game tutorial character, putting the instructions in front of Max in plain English. Max, remember your training. When Bird Brother has to squawk. The bad guys raid the banquet hall. Bird Brother's squawking and the fish guy is having a bad time. All that makeup just to show him having a bad time. The war is going on, by the way. No news on what the Legend of the Rings are though. The evil Max is up against all spawns from Dagda, a real <sighs> villain with henchmen and all. Where's Fetch? I need Fetch. Fetch! Fetch! Fetch is a guy and Worm is a guy, go Blanomorph. He's the wormiest guy. Huh? You know I'm not a bloody fighter. So quick and so horny to say my lord to Daddy Dagda. Every time Dagda's annoyed, he's like, <sighs> he does this weird, angry, I just had a refreshing sprite sound. Ah. <sighs> Is there a word 
for that sound. It's awesome. Worm is always creeping around the whole movie, overhearing the good guy's plans, but I didn't even know this was Worm to begin with. It is not the same actor. So it just kind of feels like there's these random cutaways to this just like random guy in the woods all the time, just interrupting the movie. Max reads about Fayoon, the wizard guardian, and then 20 minutes later, Max meets Fayoon, the wizard guardian. Will that be enough, my young wizard? They whitewash this character on the European cover of the DVD. Like, who else would this be? Fayoun comes out of nowhere and teaches Max everything he needs to know to solve the war. Bestow me now the blanket of your opacity. You did it! You did it! Yeah, Max! And that, my young apprentice, is only the beginning. Whoa. So it's up to Max to solve the war. Like Mr. Tim, Fayoun could do it himself, but Fayoun also has to spend time with Mr. Tim's wife. So after training with Fayoun, Max trains with Tom Tittot and Etain. <laughs> Etain loves that Max just beats people up with sticks and they adopt it into their fighting style. Maybe these guys don't need guns. I'm getting the hang of this. So Dagda's top assassin comes to get Max, but Max beats the heck out of him with a stick. <laughs> He's learned well. Heck yeah. Throughout the film, Max hops between his world and the magic world, and obviously he brings Krimble with him. When he goes home, his mom's like, where have you been? Max says he was just at a friend's house, and his parents are so elated their loser son has a friend they ask no more questions. The friend is Krimble. Krimble the mouse. Wow. You wanna do something really cool? Krimble and Max use the magic book to smoke some fatties or to create a sauna or something. It's sparkling. I never saw Harry Potter ripping one with Hedwig. Max's parents come up into the bedroom to see what the rat ruckus is, but then, oh my God, they see Krimble the rat. Ah! It's a mouse. The mouse. Oh, get up here. Mom, it's okay, mom, he's my mouse, mom. Hurry. Hurry. Shh. Max explains this is his friend. A mouse, Max? You wanna keep a mouse? Max's dad just doesn't give a shit. He's so nonchalant with every delivery. <laughs> well, all right, sure. What? As long as you keep it in a cage, it's fine with me. Say what? what, what? Come again? Walter! Okay. Sure. Max could be like, I made friends with a grown adult man named Mr. Tim. You don't know him. And his dad would just be like, well, all right. Hey. That's some Italian acting right there. So now that they know that Max's friend was a mouse all along, don't you think they'd start asking where he was? He did say he was at a friend's house after all. At whose house did you acquire this mouse, Mr. Tim? Oh, mom, Krimble says you're a great cook. Ugh. Don't you think the kids are gonna pick on you more if they think you talk to him? But dad, I do talk to him. Max, it's a mouse. It doesn't talk. The dad is so chill about the fucking floating milk. Whoa, huh. that Isn't is that cool, cool. Yeah. Great. Honestly, he's probably just happy that the many gallons of milk Max asks for is getting put to good use. Some use. But talking to a mouse? That's gone too far. The milk and eggs bill is already so high and Krimble's going to want cheese. They need to keep cheese away from Max. No, there's nothing uh, underneath him. I'm there's going, nothing I'm, underneath I'm, him. No, please put okay. him down. So all this movie and no rings? Well, after Max is whacked in the skull with a warhammer, just a regular Tuesday for Max Magician, Princess Etain wakes him up to tell him about the legend of the rings. And finally, we get some rings. Just had to wait about 40 minutes into the film. Are you guys like elves or something? And the bad guys, they're like trolls and stuff? It's quite literally Max Magician and the legend of the rings. It's literally a short little story Etain tells Max. And now we get some of the worst flashback scenes ever. They are so dumpy. This is the worst part of the movie. They throw so many new characters at us that are currently not within the action. And it's just like, why not have Max meet these characters instead of hear about them? So like in the first flashback, it's Max's mom and Dagda. Actually, that's a different actress entirely, but I genuinely thought they were the same actor. <laughs> Hello, Dagda. What brings you into the sunshine? You, 
my lady. Dagon is even creepier when he's flirting with her. She rejects him, wanting to hold on to her powerful ring. But he knocks the shit out of her and steals it. He hits her with his nails, like fucking Dio. In the next scene, the elf king attains dad, who goes to get his elf wife back from Dagda, walks in to get her. If it was going to be this easy, I don't know why Dagda would even try to kidnap her in the first place. He is here, sire. My queen! I, I, I can certainly explain this. Stag just like, can you blame me for trying to kidnap her? All of the women in my kingdom are so gross and so ugly. This is what women look like in my realm. I love how his little harem of women just like kind of wave and laugh as he mentions them and talks about how gross they are. Just some actors very happy to be on screen. It's very wholesome. Can you blame an honorable man for a weak moment, hmm? So Dagda releases the elf queen and she wakes up and it's not very flattering. So Dagda puts a curse on the whole elf kingdom. Some people sleep, some people turn into animals, Etain is fine. It's a casual kind of curse. War is still happening and now Worm is switching sides? He says, Max, I want to be friends with you. Dagda's so mean. So you're a bad guy, huh? Well... I'm not all bad. So Max vouches for worms, but the elves hate worm. Max is like, what about Tom Tit Tot? The elves are like, oh, he's a Gobloromorph. That's a Goblonomorph. We're very picky about the little ugly guys we like to keep around. This sets Max off. A fool? I am not. You could make me stare if you tried. I, I could put a spell on all of you. Having a little Chris Cuomo moment there, aren't we? Betrayed by his friends, the beating drums of war sets Max in motion. He uses his book to raise an army of the dead. His own army lying deeply asleep under just a few inches of leaves. The elves are losing the fight, but Max comes in with his army, defeating Dagda's army and convincing the elves that goblin racism is wrong. But it's not over yet. Dagda goes for Max, but Crimble jumps in front of them, dying. Max, in a rage, hits Dagda with his most powerful spell, summoning like 30 mice. They crawl all over Dagda, defeating him somehow, once and for all. Crimble crumbles and is confirmed dead. Worm watches Max almost cry about it. The death of his friend is so much that Max returns home without saying goodbye to anyone. The bullies are back for Max until some kid with big ears come into frame. Who is that? <gasps> It's Crimble! It's me, Max. Crimble. What? It's Crimble in real life in HD. 60 frames a second. Oh my god, Dag does a mouse now. How humorous. So Crimble takes Max back to the Renaissance Fair for a proper goodbye. The war is over, evil is defeated, and Max Magician gets a ring. Pretty sick. But what does Max's tomorrow look like? Tom Tit Tot, Worm, and Crimble all live in his closet. Oh. Then we can play the PlayStation. <laughs> what the fuck? And Lord Dagda, he's there too, as a mouse, running on a little wheel, just scratching his little nose. <laughs> Max Magician in The Legend of the Rings was truly a fun watch. Being low budget and rough around the edges does not mean it's not entertaining. I was very happy to see this little award wreath on the film's poster being acknowledged as the best youth oriented film at the Bare Bones International Film Festival in 2002. A festival inspired by the no budget filmmaking attitude of Robert Rodriguez and his book Rebel Without a Crew, which I talked about in my video on Spy Kids. Max Magician definitely uses their resources to their full extent under the time constraints they were under from the distributor. The action is pretty well choreographed and that guy right there, he's the fight coordinator. Look at him go. Sick kick, yo. And the pose, fuck. It seems like they had access to strong theatrical talent and it looks like they had a good time with it all. But the makeup department hard carried the whole production team. The prosthetics are well sculpted, but the film's lighting doesn't do him any favors. I do find the sound design in the film to be very fun to listen to because it, it sounds like a shit post. Now I'm off to do. King things. 
I checked every device in my apartment before believing that fart sound came from this movie. I, I'm pretty sure I've used that exact sound effect in videos before. People put a lot of time into trying to emulate this kind of earnest filmmaking all the time. The bad, but good bad movies. When you have a cast of amateur actors, often children will give the most entertaining performances because even when the performance is not believable, they're giving it their all. It doesn't matter how crazy the material is. You can definitely tell that this is Max's first film acting gig. Even so, he still manages to give some great line deliveries that are hilarious, along with bold reactions that make for sweet moments in the movie. Well, sometimes the adult actors can't keep it together. If I may say. And where were you last evening? <sighs> Fetcher says you were not to be found. There's something magical about that. And I think Max the Magician is pretty magical. See ya. Thank you.